Hey everyone, my name is Ellen and today I'm going to be showing you guys how to play Safe and Sound by Taylor Swift featuring the Civil Wars. So stay tuned if this is something you want to learn. So this song may be a little bit challenging if you're completely new at guitar. You may want to start with some other Taylor Swift songs first before you attempt this one. But um, I did try to simplify things and make it a little bit easier for those of us who have been playing just for a little while. A lot of what I'll be teaching you in this tutorial is based off of what I played in my cover and I'll go ahead and put a little link over here so you can go watch it if you want to. Um, but that's pretty much what I'm going to be teaching you today. So yeah, let's get started. I know I can hurt you now. Come on. So first of all, you are going to need a capo for this guitar and it's going to be on the 7th fret. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Um, if you don't have a capo, you can play it without one using these same chords and the same strumming and picking and everything. It'll just sound a lot lower. But if you wanted to sing it in the exact same key Taylor Swift sings it in, which is very high may I add, then um, you would put it on the 7th fret. So along with your capo being on the 7th fret, you're also going to need to know 7 different chords to play this song. And so I'll go ahead and show those to you now. is D minor that looks like this and it sounds like this okay after that you need to know A minor that looks like this and it sounds like this Okay, after that, you need to know F, which is a barred chord, so I know that's kind of hard for some of you, but I'm about to show you an alternate way to play it. But this is F, and it looks like this, and it sounds like this. And as you can tell, it's kind of hard for me to play F this high on the guitar neck, so I'll go ahead and show you an alternate fingering for F, which looks like this and it sounds like this okay after that you're going to need to know C which looks like this and sounds like this Okay, we're almost done. You need to know G, which looks like this, and sounds like this. And last but not least, you need to know D, which looks like this, and sounds like this. So as you can tell, there are quite a few chords in this song, but most of them are pretty simple and a couple of them you don't even play except for maybe like once or twice in the whole song. So don't fret too much if you're having trouble with them, just keep practicing. I promise it'll get easier as you practice more. When you're ready and you have all your chords memorized and you think you can play them pretty well, then go ahead and continue this video and I'll show you some strumming patterns you can use in the song. No one can hurt you now. tutorials, I'm sure you know what I'm about to say. Um, always start your strumming pattern if you're new at guitar with just strumming each chord one time on the downbeat. That way you know kind of where you're going to be transitioning between your chords and you can just kind of practice singing along with it without having to do anything extravagant. So I'll go ahead and give you an example of how it sounds when you just strum with it once. I remember tears streaming down your face when I said I'll never let you go. All the shadows almost killed your life. And you can pretty much practice the entire.
entire song with just strumming once on the beat. And then um, when you get that and you kind of know where these transitions are and you're kind of um, used to where to expect them, then go ahead and try to up your game with your strumming and I'll go ahead and show you a very simple pattern that would work for the entire song. So this next pattern I have to show you will work for the entire song and I'll go ahead and give you the pattern right now. The pattern is just down, 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 up. And it's like that for every chord that you're going to play. So for instance, on D minor, you play down, 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 up. Down, 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 up. Down, 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 up. Down, 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 up. And what happens is if you practice this with every chord, so let's go ahead and try A minor. Down. Same thing, F, down, 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 up, down, 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 up. And once you get the hang of that with every individual chord, you can kind of start linking them together um, and it'll become more fluent like this. Down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up. That way you can play the entire song with just this pattern and it'll sound fine. So I'll go ahead and give you an example of how that sounds. I remember tears streaming down your face when I said I'll never let you go. When all the shadows almost killed your life. And occasionally you'll hear that sometimes at the end of a phrase you'll have two chords in one little measure. So it'll go D minor, A minor. together the C and the G are. So um, whenever you do that, you could just do this pattern down, down, up, down, down, up for each chord. So C would be down, down, up, G would be down, down, up. So just remember whenever you have a full measure with just one chord, you're going to play down, 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 up. And then whenever you have a measure that's broken up into different beats with two different chords, it's going to be down, down, up for each chord. So let me go ahead and show you an example of that all the way through. Down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, 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 up, down, down, up, down, down, up. So you can hear at the end there's more than one note in that last measure. So you're just going to shorten the pattern a little bit to make it down, down, up. So let me give you one more example of how that sounds when you put it all together. I remember tears streaming down your face when I said. strumming pattern. If you don't like it, then like I always say, you can always make up your own, whatever feels natural to you and just whatever you feel comfortable playing. Um, but if you want to learn some picking patterns to make it sound a little bit more like the original song, then go ahead and continue this video and I'm going to show you some picking patterns next. Alright, so now I'm going to show you guys some picking patterns that you can use for this song. Um, just keep in mind that for this part, I will be using the alternate fingering for F whenever I play F. Just because um, later on when the picking gets a little bit harder, it'll be easier to play the alternate version. So um, go ahead and put your D minor chord on. And what we're going to do is you're going to start by plucking the bottom string. So four. And then the next string, three. And then you're going to pick the top two strings together. Okay, so four, three, two, one. Now go ahead and put your A minor chord on, and we're going to do the same thing. We're going to pick the lowest string first, which is five. Then we're going to play the middle string, which is three. And then again, we're going to play the top two strings at the same time. So five, three, two, one. Notice 
between D minor and A minor that the top three strings are always going to be played in the same pattern. The only one that you're ever moving is your thumb, the which bottom string you're playing. So let's go ahead and put D minor and A minor together. It'll be four, three, two, one, five, three, two, one. Okay, so as you can guess, the F would be next. And I'm going to be using the alternate fingering for F, remember? This one. <laughs> and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to play the bottom string again, which in this case would be four. And then three. And then play the top two strings at the same time. So four, three, two, one. And then lastly, you're going to put your C chord on, and it's going to be the same thing. We're going to play the bottom string, which is five, and then three, and then the top two. So C again is five, three, two. So this is just a really simple way to play this song and kind of have it sound a little cooler than if you were to just strum it. Um, so go ahead and let's start from D minor and go all the way through one little round here. Four, three, two, one. Okay, so that's pretty much how you would play the whole rest of the song for every chord. The three, two, and one, the last three notes are always going to be the same. All you're ever going to change is what string you play with your thumb. And that's just going to be whatever string is the lowest in the chord. So this next pattern I have to show you is going to look a lot like the first pattern I just showed you. But I'm going to teach you a cool little technique you can use that will make it sound a lot more like the original. So go ahead and put your D minor chord on. And we're going to start this out the exact same way we started out picking pattern one. Pluck four, then three, and then two and one. Except this time what we're going to do is actually going to be with our left hand, our playing hand. When you pluck the top two strings, you're going to let go of your pointer or your index finger. And when you let go of it, it's going to make a sound when it comes off. Did you hear that? So what happens is when you play the whole thing, it kind of sounds more like how you hear it in Taylor Swift's version. So four, three, flick the string. Let's practice that a couple times. So now from there you're going to go to your A minor chord and you're going to play this just like in picking pattern one. Five, three, two. Five, three, two. So if you go from D minor to A minor it sounds like this. alternate F chord on and this time it's going to get a little bit trickier. What we're going to do is we're just going to play the fourth and third strings. We're just going to plug those ones. Okay, but this is going to be opposite of earlier. Earlier we took our index finger and we flipped it off to make that sound. This time what we're going to do is we're going to start with our middle finger off the string. So all that's on is our third finger. And after we pluck the third and fourth strings, you're going to kind of slap your middle finger onto the string where it's supposed to be. So do you can kind of hear that it makes that own sound. So whenever I kind of hit the string, 
I'm making a sound with my left hand and my right hand's not even doing anything. Okay, so go ahead and pluck the third and fourth string and you're going to slap that middle finger onto the neck of your guitar. So. And so now with your right hand, what you're gonna do is you're gonna finish out that sound. So after you slap, you're gonna keep pluck you're going to keep picking the third string. So you're going to play both, slap it, play the third string t three times. The first two times you're going to play it with your middle finger on. The third time you're going to take off the middle finger. So let's practice that a couple of times. Play both the middle strings and then slap on the middle finger. Play that twice. Take off the middle finger. Okay? So one more time. I know this seems a little tricky, but I promise if you slow down and you practice it a couple of times, you'll definitely get it. And then from here, your hand's almost already in the position for C, so let's go ahead and just put your C chord on. And you can just strum this one. So the whole last part goes like this. One more time. I know this is a little hard to catch on to, but you guys have to just keep practicing and keep persevering, and I promise you, you'll get it eventually. So let's start with D minor and go through the entire round. D minor. A minor. Okay, let's do that one more time. D minor. A minor, normal, F alternate, C, strum. For the rest of this little phrase, first two chords are the same at least, D minor, A minor. But this time, when we get to the alternate F chord, what you're going to do is play each string once. So starting with the bottom string, which is the fourth, you're just going to play four, three, two. Four, three. easier all you have to do is pluck each string once four three two and then right after that you just go to C all you have to do is move your middle finger and your ring finger up one string and that's C and you just strum it so let's try that again with the alternate F four three two C four three two strum C So the last part of this phrase is really easy. It's just that middle part that gets a little confusing. So let's go ahead and try to play this entire phrase through using picking pattern two. So you have D minor, A minor, F, C, D minor, A minor,
pretty much how you play Picking Pattern 2. Use that through the entire song. It just repeats over and over and over again for the whole song. And um, if you kind of have this down and it's kind of coming easy to you because you've practiced it a lot, then go ahead and continue and I will show you the third picking pattern, which is the most complicated and it sounds the most like Taylor Swift's real song. So for this third picking pattern, it's going to sound a lot like picking pattern two. So go ahead and put your D minor chord on and this is going to start the same. Four, three, both with a flick. after you flick off that first finger you're just gonna come back and play it one more time so four three both flick one four three both flick one So it's exactly like picking pattern one, all we're doing is coming back and playing that open E one more time. So faster it sounds like this. And what that open E is doing is it's going to help us lead into our next chord which is A minor. Okay, so for A minor it's going to be exactly like picking pattern two. We're going to play the bottom string, five, three, two, five, three, two, one, five, three, two, and one, one. Okay, so all we're really adding is that open E at the top. So let's put D minor and A minor together. pattern two, right? Um, here's where it gets a little bit different. So um, we're going to start this out just like picking pattern two. So remember that little bit of a slap. So that's exactly like picking pattern two. But this time when we get to C, instead of strumming it, we're going to play the strings individually. So for C, we're going to pick the bottom string, which is five. Then we're going to play three and two. Five, three, two. Five, three, two. So C is going to be five, three, two. Five, three, two. And then here's where it gets different. You're going to take off your third finger, your ring finger, and you're going to scoot your middle finger up one string. So from here to here. Okay, so after you play the after you play C, 5 3 2, take off the ring finger, put the middle finger up, and then play 5 3 2. Okay, so 5 3 So your right hand is playing the exact same strings both times. The only thing that's changing is your fingering position on your left hand. So let's do C one more time. Just put your C on like regular and you're going to play 5, 3, 2. Let go of your ring. Put your middle finger up one string. 5, 3, 2. So faster C should sound like this. So let's go ahead and put that F before the C to see what it sounds like together. One more time. So if you put all of picking pattern three together, it should sound like this. Okay, let's go through that 
that one more time. D minor, click, open, A minor, just regular, F, C, okay. And then that's like the first half of the phrase. The second half would be pretty much the same. It would be D minor, exactly how we just played it, and then A minor, exactly the same still. And then now it would go back to what we learned in picking pattern two. F, we're just gonna strum each string in it. Four, three, two, and then C is just strumming. Pattern 3 is almost exactly like picking pattern 2 except for the little bit of extra we're adding with that C chord. So let's play all of picking pattern 3 together. for you right now, my suggestion would be to go back and rewind a little bit until you get to the part where you think you're having trouble and just practice that so slowly over and over again. Um, or if you're in a rush and you kind of have to know this song for some reason, like you're going to perform it, then maybe just stick with the strumming patterns. Because I think it sounds great either way. So remember, don't try to just jump to picking pattern three immediately if you're brand new at guitar. Make sure to build up your skills. So start with picking pattern one, then try to add in things for picking pattern two, and then move on to picking pattern three when you're ready. So you should be starting off like this. pattern and then if you feel comfortable with that then you can move on to picking pattern two and then after much much practice if you get that then you can move on to picking pattern three time and effort and practice into it and um, one thing I know that helps me that you guys might want to try to start developing is some calluses the tips of my fingers are extremely rough from years and years of violin and now years and years of guitar so um, if your hand starts to really start hurting and then you see these little creases in your fingers that's normal but if it starts to really hurt then go ahead and just put your guitar down and take a little bit of a break before you pick it up and try to do it again because um, usually I know if you're starting to feel like you're in pain you're gonna get more frustrated and then you're gonna think "Oh, I just can't do this but I swear you guys can it just takes a lot of practice okay so hopefully you guys feel pretty comfortable with all the different chords, um, the one and two strumming patterns that I showed you, as well as the three different levels of a picking pattern that I showed you. Um, when you feel comfortable with that, go ahead and continue this video and I will take you through the entire song. I'll have all the chords and lyrics and everything listed in front of you so that you don't have to go searching for anything. And um, yeah, I'll play an example and you guys can just follow along with me. What's going to happen is that I really 
really can't sing this song, one, because it's like so incredibly high, but two, also because it's very hard for me to concentrate on the guitar when I'm picking as well as sing at the same time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sing while strumming and then I'm going to have a little um, box up here where I will show you the picking pattern in case that's what you're following along with. So let's go ahead and when your hands are all rested and you feel up to it, go ahead and continue this video and we'll go through the whole song together. for making it this far into the video and because I'm so proud of you I wanted to announce and uh, sneak in a little bit of a giveaway I have here a red capo and I know a lot of you guys are always like oh I don't have a capo so I can't play all of these songs that you're teaching um, remember you can always make your own capo but um, if you don't have things for that then go ahead and leave a comment below and also make sure you're subscribed to my channel and if you do those two things then I will enter you into this capo thing. Um, what you'll get is this capo, a guitar pick, a little letter from me, and also that letter will have my Skype screen name in it, and I will give you a free 30-minute guitar lesson on Skype with me. So um, yeah, to enter, all you gotta do is leave a comment below and make sure you're subscribed. And um, just so you know, this is gonna be like a new series thing that I'm doing. I've signed it Forever Faithful. I have the song that it was from, Safe and Sound. And then this is, here is it, there we go. This is the number one capo in my K 
capo giveaway. I think what I'm going to do is from now on, whenever I have a cover song like this, I'm going to give away a capo at the end. So make sure that you subscribe now so that you're eligible for all of the different capo giveaways that I'll be doing in the future. So um, yeah, thanks so much you guys for watching this video. I really hope that I was able to help you, even if it was just a little piece of advice or something. Um, make sure please to comment and like and subscribe and favorite and share and do all those amazing crazy things that you guys do. And um, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys in my next video. Until then, take care. Bye. Girl, you seem too high, girl. Ooh.